Greetings beautiful people. My name is Simon Javan Okelo and you're tuned into the Madaraka podcast here in the Madaraka Festival YouTube channel and we are live from Los Angeles. It's the Grammy weekend and uh, I'm here with the legendary African artist Rocky Dawoni, my brother who has been nominated three times for the Grammys. He's released multiple albums and really he's also served the motherland in so many ways including serving as the UN environmental ambassador. My brother, how are you doing today? I am doing very, very, very well. Thank but, you for having me. Of course, yeah. of course. I just want to first thank you for helping build Madaraka Festival to what it is today. <laughs> yeah. You know, we are celebrating 10 years of Madaraka Festival this year. Oh, wow. wow and wow, I remember wow. when we were together with you in Seattle. Uh, even before that, we talked a lot about what I was trying to do. I had, yes, to, yes. had to, you know, share the vision with you in order to get your buy-in. Yes. And uh, last year, we were able to attract over 25,000 people across the U.S., uh, with Saudi Soul as the headliners, and this year we are becoming even more ambitious. We, our goal is to tour 13 cities uh, three times this year. Mm. And so, you know, just reflecting on where we've come from, I just want to again thank you from the bottom of my heart before we go deeper into this conversation. You know, when you look at this moment here at the Grammys and all the you know, all the new categories that have been added uh, yes. to the Grammy and the sweat, blood and tears that people like you have put in to make such uh, events possible. How do you feel? Well, for me, you know, I think that, um, you know, on the cusp of like a very important, um, you know, Grammy where uh, the best uh, African music performance, you know, has been introduced. And um, <clears throat> we're going to get, you know, an African, if, you know, that's going to be the first one to be, you know, to win this category. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that has been long time coming, right. you know. And for me, uh, as a musician that has always championed the continent, um, champion um, pushed for people to pay attention mm -hmm. to the diversity and also you know cultural impact of the music of Africa uh, is something that I feel that is a very important milestone in that intention and in that fight for recognition you know you only have to look around you know uh, look at history and see that you know music of uh, people of African descent has been very influential when it comes to the entire ecosystem of the global, you know, uh, global music, you know, Africans or people of African descendants where, you know, started, you know, jazz, you know, reggae music, all of the uh, rock and roll, all of this foundational music that became hit to hip hop. Um, but the continental Africans who are really the ancestors uh, the, the foundational ancestors of all of these sounds, our sound has never really had opportunity of being represented, mm -hmm. apart from individual hits that have happened. Mm -hmm. And then the categories, so that most Africans were grouped into the global category, or, uh, you know, so a lot of times they, it became diluted as to because the rest of the world there was all the categories and then there was the rest of the world was grouped into one tiny category and everybody fought for that you know without paying attention to like this immense continent of creatives this immense continent of music this immense continent of cultural influence and so i myself you know throughout my career you know and then when i became a member of the academy always advocated for this um, you know, a lot, you know, I have, I had several meetings with leadership, you know, I kept pushing the idea of uh, an African uh, category and recognition of African music. And to see that all of these efforts, you know, together with also all of the other people who have been pushing for this, uh, here we are uh, with a category that is honoring the music of Africa, although it's one category, 
but I feel that it's it is a, you know a key that has been turned to open the door and to bring the much awaited um, uh, recognition that African creatives have been seeking, especially when it comes to the Grammy, and also putting our music to on the pedestal of all these global art forms too that are awarded, you know, this type of recognition. So um, it's a, I'll say that it's a good day. You know, it's really a good day and a, a beautiful beginning for a beautiful time. I agree, hundred yes. percent. You know, and when I think about your journey, not just as an as an artist, and uh, you know, I, I I believe you are one of our modern freedom fighters. It you know, I'm reminded about your your actual roots, and my understanding is that one of your brothers is actually a chief, even as we speak. You yes, know? yes, yes. Uh, could you speak to how? Our ancestors are actually proud of what's going on now at the Grammys, but also, you know, the value of bringing our culture authentically to the global stage. You know, when when you look at the world uh, African music scene, a lot of people believe that Afrobeat is the only African music. You know, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Uh, but we do have reggae, African <laughs> reggae. So, you yes, know? yes, yes, yes. And yes. then when you think about African reggae, we have Ghanaian reggae, Kenyan reggae, Tanzanian yeah. reggae, yeah. even hip hop, African yeah. hip hop. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Then we have traditional African music. Yeah. You know. And uh, so I want you to just go back, uh, share with us a bit of your roots. You know, and yeah. how important it is that we infuse, um, you know the dreams of our ancestors yeah. uh, into the work we do today? Well, you know, the thing is, um, every African, you know, we are, has, is connected to their tribes. Right. And we all have tribal culture. And within the tribal culture, there is, you know, our language, there is our dance, there is the food, uh, there is, you know, the fashion. Um, and there's even the world view, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, traditions and rituals that define, you know, most tribes. And we have the diversity of all of this. And to be African is to be aware of all of this. And for me to growing up in a traditional home, and um, my family has been a family of chiefs. So, you know, my grandfather was a chief, you know, so we have the lineage, you know, the royal traditional lineage, you know. And royal traditional lineages too are about the conservation and preservation of cultural identity, mm -hmm. you know, because you are preserving the tribe and you're keeping the tribe's language and what a tribe means mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in the most authentic way that you can. Mm -hmm. So coming from those roots as a musician and as an, as an artist, um, for me, I felt that, you know, these are the elements that inform our creativity. These, this is the aspect of us that we have to share with the rest of the world. You know, so to, 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 to be able to nurture this and grow it in a way that it can really be able to transcend boundaries and be able to be shared was an important part of me, my musical journey, you know. So, you know, the, 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 and then also to know that there's so much diversity too, you know, apart from the tri tribal diversity, like Ghana has over 70 languages, mm -hmm. you know, and all of these languages are below to, you know, different tribes. tribes. Yeah. You know, and all of these tribes have musical styles and musical forms and rhythms. You know, so the, it's very hard to even uh, be able to express the magnanimity of right. what the continent represents. Right. You know, so for me, it's about being able to tell our own story, being able to own our own narrative, being able to uh, present to the world the kind of vision of who we are as a people, and I feel that that is what to the world is waiting for, because the world right now needs uh, the infusion of new knowledge. 
infusion of new perspectives, infusion of new styles. And when Afrobeat became very, very popular, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, wow, you know, I mean, most people knew, let's say, you know, previous African styles, you know, like from High Life and all of that, you know, they were popular, but they, were, they never got the global impact that Afrobeat has had across the board, you know, right now, because we have tools like, uh, of technology that are helping us also to amplify mm -hmm. and push all of these musical forms to a much more wider audience. Mm -hmm. So now the opportunity is there to also expose all the diversity of African sounds too that exists in all of these different cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then with the different cultures, the music also comes, the food, the fashion. The fashion. You know, the, the, the creativity that is, uh, uh, you know, that is embedded in the cultural identity. Mm -hmm. So I see a whole African renaissance, mm -hmm. you know, and for me, I feel that it has been the intention of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. You know, our ancestors have always, you know, growing up as an, you know, an African, you know, that our ancestors, our ancestors' vision, we are the manifestation of our ancestors' vision. Mm -hmm. So if we are here at this time and age, and our music is all of a sudden, you know, being beamed across various platforms, mm -hmm. It's uh, people are waking up mm -hmm. to the diversity uh, and plurality of Africa. You know, it's, I feel that we're on the cusp of a golden age. Mm -hmm. A golden age, not necessarily for Africans, a golden age for also all of humanity because there's a fresh opportunity for humanity to express new things. And those new things are going to come from places to, that have, been, have done the due diligence of preserving their culture. And I think that that is what Africa represents. That is what the times in which we live in. That is what me coming from an indigenous culture, uh, an indigenous household, I know it's my responsibility to inspire you know, other African artists to make sure that they really integrate all of this. So Afrobeat is just the first wave of attention mm -hmm. for people because people need to connect somewhere. Right. And I think through this too, now people are going to be able to step into and get to know Africa a lot more. Right. And I think that will go a long way to change the narrative of Africa that has been reduced to you know, famine, poverty, mm -hmm. and, you know, constantly looking for handouts. But oh, yeah. it will shift it to a place that has always had the power, ancient power. You can look at Egypt and all of these creations that were actually part of Africa. Now people are going to start recognizing Africa for that, right. you know. Right. So for me, that's how I see, you know, right. the times in which we're living right now. I love it. So, um, you know, your music is what has catapulted you to the icon that you've become, you know. And I want, I know that you're in studio, you're working on an album currently. Yes, yes, yes. But yes, I want yes. you to just uh, paint for us a picture of your music, you know, uh, your, your first album. Yes. Uh, until now, what yes, you're working yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. one of the songs I remember you the most about, from personally, yes. is the... The song that you did the video in a boxing ring. Oh, African Thriller. African Thriller. Yeah. I love that song. So, <laughs> so talk about everything, but focus more on African Thriller. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I've always, you know, the thing is that, you know, music is, um, music is an articulation of who right. you are. Right. You know, every musician, you know, for you to be able to create the works that speaks to you, it has to be your own truth. Mm -hmm. And none of us grew up, I grew up from traditional music, right. because like every African, traditional music, the traditional drums, the music, the songs right. are what you grow up on. And then you start hearing radio, and the radio is like, let's say, the popular music in your country. Right. And then you start hearing popular music from outside the world mm. and all of that. So as an artist, all of these played a very big role in my Evolution as an, uh, a musician and also my trajectory as a musician. Mm. When my first record, you know, uh, came out, you know, right after college, which was uh, the movement. The movement was a reggae 
record mixed with a little bit of African uh, elements because I had come out, I, I grew up in a military barracks. During the time I was growing up, you know, we were influenced by a lot of Jamaican reggae, mm. Afro beats, and then traditional high life music, which I grew up on. Mm. So my first album really reflected the music that I loved. So there was mm. a lot more reggae in that. But then as I became confident as an artist to now push my voice rather than the influences, things started shifting in terms of my musical styles. And I like to call my music Afro Roots. My music is called Afro Roots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the evolution of the Afro Roots uh, sound, you know, started from reggae, high life, uh, and, 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 and soul foundations, and Afrobeat foundation, mm -hmm. but it was in a gradual sense. And by the time the second album, Crusade, came out, you know, there was the big hit in Ghana, mm -hmm. which became very, very popular, uh, both uh, continent-wide, Putumayo licensed it, it became like a global big hit. Um, it also launched me in terms of touring career, from Ghana, you know, I started playing festivals in the United States. Uh, then, right after Crusade, um, I did an album called Awakening. Awakening was more kind of like an album that I was searching to move away from the sounds that were I felt were a little bit leaning too much to reggae music because I was pushing, trying to push more the African elements. Mm -hmm. But then this was really realized when I did the album, Book of Changes. Mm -hmm. Book of Changes was a full on departure because all of a sudden I was using traditional musicians uh, that I had grown up with. I was using, you know, being influenced more by Afrobeat. I was using a lot singing in a much more diverse language approaches. Uh, you know, expanding the African, my African experience more. Mm -hmm. And songs like, you know, Wake the Town, Africa for Land, Wake the Town, then started being licensed for American television. Yeah. Um, so it started moving me from just being a reggae artist into the, you know, TV and video, uh, video games, you know, EA licensed from that album because the sound was d different and revolutionary. Mm. But when I did that record, it alienated a lot of my reggae fans, you know, who were all of a sudden, I built this fan base in Ghana, you know, my yearly concerts, you know, in uh, Labadi Beach, 50,000 people, all of that, you know. Mm. You know, all of a sudden, this fan base, everybody was like, where are you going? Mm. You know, because they're used to the reggae heavy aspects of my music. Mm. But then what Af the, the, the Book of Changes did uh, for me too was that it started winning me fans in terms of music aficionados, non-reggae listeners, world music listeners, people who were into alternative music. Mm. And so it was getting a much more wider audience. Wider audience. Right. But it was also part of me self-discovery. Mm -hmm. So from that then came the album to, uh, you know, that, the interesting thing about the, you know, that album too, and all the complaints that I was hearing from my fan base was that I also went deeper and said, okay, now I want to refine my songwriting because the next album I want to do, you know, spending time in America, I want to learn about like songwriters like Bob Dylan, you know, I want to learn like, you know, Curtis Mayfield, all these great songwriters, I want to learn their methods. Mm. So I did a deep dive into their methods. Mm. And then, so when I came back to work on Hymns for the Rebel Soul, which was the album that followed up, the album was a very big departure from those earlier albums because now I had evolved into like a song, a very refined songwriter who's been, who's been studying amazing songwriters, legendary songwriters. Mm. So that album became a definitive also a balance of the African style and also the reggae style. Mm. So it spawned African reggae fever all of Africa, which was licensed for the World Cup in mm. South Africa. Mm. You know, Download the Revolution was licensed by EA mm. uh, for their video game. Uh, then the album was nominated for NAACP Image Award for Best uh, World Music Album. Mm. So that 
you know, me challenging myself and you trying to move into a new phase of creativity also came with its own rewards. Right. So that album then, then we go to Branches of the Same Tree, which, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, has the, the track African, African Trailer. Trailer. Yeah, I love that. So, yes, yes. So Branches of the Same Tree, you know, after I did Hymns of the Rebel Soul, it was successful. Everybody was like, can you top this record? You know, I mean, they, you know, it, it had a lot. That record was loved mm. by people who were into songwriting. Mm. It was loved by reggae fans, it was loved by world music fans. And even recently, um, you know, Songlines, uh, you know, the big world music, named it one of the most essential reggae albums of all time. Oh, wow. They named uh, uh, Hymns for the Rebel Soul. So this was kind of the album that I had been able to create at that time. So I also went, you know, then I had a deal with uh, um, Kumbacha right afterwards for my next album. So I started working on it. I was like, okay, this album has to be another modern step above Hymns for the Rebel Soul. So that's when Branches came. And Branches was a very beautiful, Mm -hmm. diverse. It came with a songwriting aspect. It came, but it also had like improved the aspects of my Afro root sound now. Afro root sound had people now can could hear what my new sound was, what the sound that I had been talking about all the time. So African Thriller was really the first single. It was also to express the Afro roots sound of the album. Mm-hmm. It came out blazing. It was, you know, MTV. You know, there was a lot of attention for right. that album. And the album was uh, eventually nominated for uh, Best Reggae Album, but it was the most diverse reggae album ever mm-hmm. because it didn't sound anything like the other ones that were nominated in categories. So in a gist, that was kind of what the trajectory of my music and how, you know, and then beyond that, you know, I've had three other nominations after that. but. These were all the pivotal moments that defined my career. Right. Yeah. I love it. So then, uh, you know, as, as, as you're working on your current album, yes. uh, you know, what is inspiring you to actually, what is, what, what is the driving force? Because now I feel like uh, the journey through all the work that you've been putting in, yeah is also influenced by your philanthropy. I feel like you've... Yes, yes, you've, yes, yes. You've yes. taken a lot of time in working with the UN. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen you work closely with the Canadian ambas- uh, Canadian Prime Minister. Yes. I've yes. seen you in Asia. Yes, yes. Speak to how your travels also is influencing your next project. You know, the thing is that I have always, you know, maintained that my music is about you know, articulating the things that I see and feel. And right. I've always believed that as an artist, if, you know, your artistry does not result in social impact, then it diminishes the legacy that, you know, you you leave mm-hmm. or the legacy that you create. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that we are all given a certain talent to add to value to the community from which we come from, Mm -hmm. to refine, you know, uh, make us better people, Mm -hmm. at the same time to try to make our audiences also aspire to something greater Mm -hmm. than themselves from just experiencing the music. Mm -hmm. And I see my words in my music as my truth. And I talk about these things. I talk about a better world. I talk about oneness. I talk about unity. I talk about we living for others. Mm-hmm. But if I talk about all of these things and in real life I don't live it, then that means that my words are hollow. Yeah. You know, so for me, I saw activism as a part of also helping the resonance of my lyrics and my music to reflect the truth that I believed in. Mm-hmm. You know, so doing that work also authenticated my mission and my vision in my music. Mm -hmm. So at a very early part of my career, I recognized the importance of going on the field, 
connecting with people, working with communities. You know, I was very involved in even the eradication of guinea worm in mm. Ghana because, mm. you know, I, I come from the northern part of the, of, of the country and when I saw it was a big problem in the country, I jumped on it, started to get artists involved in it. At that time too, I had the, the Rocky Independence Splash in Ghana, which was one of the biggest stages that any artist could, could play. So any artist that wanted to play there, they had to do social work with me. I took them on the field. Like mm -hmm. one week, we went to go do advocacy for clean water initiatives. We worked with UN organizations, you know, to really like, you know, move the needle when it came to social issues. So in doing so too, it started inspiring a lot of generation, new yeah. generation of Ghanaian artists. Everybody had a social cause yeah. to, because if you didn't have a social cause, you weren't playing on the stage, yeah. you know? And that also started really inspiring like a whole new generation of artists who focused on social issues. So yes. throughout that journey, mm -hmm. um, you know, I started working with, you know, from the United Nations to, you know, all of these organizations yeah. around the world yeah. uh, up to this day. Yeah. There's a young artist you recently dropped a tune with. Can you speak <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speak yeah, about, yeah. because it's connected to what you're, you're, you're talking about. And yes. I really love everything you just said because uh, for me, the success of a leader is the success of your, of your success. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So speak to that, and yes, then um, yes. we, we should wrap up. For those who are just joining us, I'm really joined here by the legendary Rocky Dauni, a Ghanaian brother who, as you've been hearing and watching, is doing incredible work musically and also in terms of philanthropy. And we are at the Grammy uh, weekend. Tomorrow is the Grammy here in Los Angeles. And Rocky has been instrumental in advocating for the creation of New, new categories for African genres in the Grammy. And so that's part of why we are having this conversation. Uh, remember to subscribe to the Madaraka Festival YouTube channel to support this incredible work that we are doing. My brother, speak yes. to this latest tune that you dropped with the young artist from Ghana. What's his name? Kweku Flick. Kweku Flick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, Kweku Flick is, um, you know, for me, you know, most of the time, New artists, you know, you know, up and coming artists will come to me, and a lot of them are feel intimidated to ask me to, oh, do you want a feature on a track or that kind of stuff? And I tell them, you know, I don't charge for no features. You know, if I believe in it, I will do it. You know, and if I believe in an artist, and I feel like, but I'm inspired by this young upcoming artist. You know, I tell them, I'm just like, you know, and when I tell them, people just get shocked. I'm like, you know, I learn from you. I come, I listen, the only way I grow is when you teach me. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, no, you're supposed to teach me. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's, it's a two-way street. Yeah. I'm constantly learning. And I'm constantly learning from new artists. I heard him do a song, and I really loved his delivery. Mm -hmm. I loved his style. I loved his approach. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, this artist has, you know, you know, you can tell an artist who you can question when they sing, you're just like, wow, this is it. Yeah. You know, and when I heard him sing, I was so like really inspired by it. And then I was on TV, national TV, for an interview, mm -hmm. and somebody asked me what artist I loved. And I yeah. said, this, this artist that yeah. I've been listening to that I really love mm -hmm. what they're doing. So he heard me mention his names and I do that a lot when I love artists I talk about them on the media mm. you know I talk about you know why I love the, what you know what they're doing and how it's inspiring me so he reached out to me and was very thankful for me you know he's like okay there's this song that I'm working on I was like you know let's meet and make it happen right. and it really was a beautiful beautiful song he's one of the you know promising uh, artists that are coming out of Ghana right now, amongst a lot of um, incredible a lot, ones. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. I yeah. remember this December seeing Stone Boy sell out to one of the stadiums in Ghana. Was yes, like, yes, yes. African yeah. music is not just selling out arenas in Europe and yes, America, yes, 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 but yes, even yes. in the motherland. You yes, know? yes. And it's across yes. genres. You yes. Know? So the timing um, of you supporting artists like that is really, really critical. Uh, as we are getting close to our 
our, the end of our time together, one of the things I love to do, especially as we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary of Madaraka Festival, is giving tips to the people who are watching our conversation, especially in regards to event production. Yes. A lot of people have reached out to me asking, how have you done this for 10 years? Yeah. So I want you to think about three things. Uh, in terms of event production, what, what, what would make an event successful for you? Because you've done it, you've been invited to so many events globally. Yeah. So share with our audiences just three things that they, that they should think about when they're producing an event. Well, first of all, the most important thing is, I think it's in terms of programming. Mm -hmm. You know, choosing the right artists because mm -hmm. everything is about curation. Right. You know, and I've seen that if you curate the right artists, it creates the right, the most important part of it is an interest mm -hmm. in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So curation for me, it's one important thing, choosing the right artists. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's sound. Sound is so important. Sound is everything. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how great anybody sounds, if the sound is not good, nobody will hear you sound good. Right. You know, so the sound should be of great, great, great importance, making sure that you have the right equipment, you have the right engineer, you know, you have, uh, you know, the right systems to be able to magnify what the artists are going to come and give. Right. So you, you've done, you've chosen the right good lineup, you have good sound, mm -hmm. and then third part is awareness and promotion. Yeah, I love it. I love so it. awareness and promotion too is to make people aware mm -hmm. and promote the event in such a way that people will know about it to come and experience all the investments that you have done in terms mm -hmm. of getting the right lineup, mm -hmm. getting the right sound set up. Mm -hmm people are there to experience this, then you have the 360 of the experience. Right. And once that happens, then it becomes a movement, a revolving, it, now you have like something that is happening because you've attended to all the aspects of the production. I love it. Yes. Your closing remarks as we wrap up. Uh, my closing remarks is about, you know, the importance of uh, music and culture to define the identity of the new Africa, who we are as a people. Mm -hmm. I feel that we have to also be very aware that music can serve two purposes. It can be a tool for empowerment, and it can also be a tool for of kind of disempowerment. Mm -hmm. And by a tool of disempowerment, uh, by a tool of disempowerment, I mean that when you have music that is mindless, that does not add any value to the spiritual needs of the people, um, but like let's say amplifies the negative aspects and illusion and um, vanity, then it turns to dumb down the people, you know, because music is energy mm -hmm. and it's a spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. So if the sound that, let's say right now, when we even look at the Afrobeats music that is playing, what is the message that Africans, what is the message in the music? Is there a message? That's a question we should be asking. Mm -hmm. Is all the music when we listen to it, that it say anything or it's just a repetition of, you know, kind of something that doesn't add value to who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, is it all about a topical thing of just dancing and drinking and, you know, and nothing that really kind of turns you on to something greater than yourself? Mm -hmm. Or is it a type of music too that has messages, inspiration, spiritual value, mm -hmm. you know, projection, of our identity, you know, uh, honoring who we are as a people. Mm -hmm. So music is a very powerful tool and we have to 
use and take a path whereby we are utilizing it as a real tool for self-development and also to what identity we project into the world. And it's up to us to divide to, to decide what it what it is. Mm -hmm. So as our music is growing around the world, that's a big question that we have to ask. That we don't depreciate our music as a means to also depreciate the value of us as a people. Mm -hmm. But the music becomes a new tool to enhance who we are, empower our people, bring unity, amplify love among each other, and push Africa into the new dawn of, you know, our rebirth as a people. I love it. I love it. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Madaraka podcast here on the Madaraka Festival YouTube channel. I've really been privileged to be here late at night in Los Angeles with a legendary <laughs> brother from Ghana who has really, really moved the needle, you know. And uh, I thank you for tuning in, and I thank you, my brother, for making the time for us yes, to connect. Yes, 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 yes. You know, we're talking, we're tired, and all yeah. of that kind of stuff, but it's, it's, it's important because it's on the eve of... The Grammys. The, the Grammys, yeah. and um, Best African Performance, yeah. you know, and um, it's, a, it's, it's a good time to have this incredible conversation. So thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Do you say Akwaba? Uh, Medasi. 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 Medasi, and then Akwaba means? Akwaba means welcome. welcome. And yeah. then Medasi, Medasi means? Medasi thank you. Uh -huh. Yes. Medasi. <laughs> Yo, Mati. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. <laughs>